Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to another, I guess, technically a uh, video tutorial or overview of a way to make your second or third generation Apple TV run off DC power rather than the provided AC connector. So what I'm doing is I'm putting this in my car, essentially, is what it's going to come down to. I have a small form factor computer that I will also show what I'm doing with that in a later video. Uh, and basically being an iTunes server for my vehicle. So all the movies that I purchased on iTunes, I want to be able to take with me rather than stream them from a phone or in use data. That way I want to have it in the vehicle. And the best way I could do it, that I could think about doing it, is uh, allowing my kids to easily choose videos at least, was running an Apple TV. And it sounds like a really cool project. If nothing else, if it doesn't work out like I hope, so be it. At least I have fun ripping one of these apart and converting it to DC power. So uh, there are other people that have done it, and so I'm just basically taking that story and turning my own and showing exactly how I do it step by step. So with that said, we're gonna go ahead and get right into it. All right, so what we're gonna need to convert this to DC, what I'm running to is to DC power, uh, is gonna be obviously the Apple TV itself. We're gonna pop this guy open, take the power supply out, and replace it with our own. Uh, the spudger, which I have uh, actual plastic spudger with a couple of removal tools for uh, actually opening up uh, MacBook or uh, Mac Mini stuff. However, I'm going to use it on this. Hopefully, I can get it to pop open without buying another spudger. Uh, but using two spudgers, plastic or metal, would, would work fine. Just want to make sure you take your time and not break anything. Then we need a DC to DC converter module, which that's what this does is a step down. Uh, the official model number on this one, so I'm using, is LM2596. Bought it on, um, on Amazon for like seven bucks is what I got for seven something. I got two of them for that price. So uh, obviously one will work just fine in this case. But if I destroy one, I guess I have a second, I have a spare. And then in my case, rather than hardwiring it from this to a DC power, I'm actually going to put in a USB port. Uh, in this case... Uh, a mini USB breakout board, which I got on eBay for 99 cents plus shipping. So it's cost like, like not even four bucks in total, but that'll allow me to actually plug a mini USB port cord right into it to power the unit rather than having it hardwired at a finite length. So that's what I decided to go with. Uh, you could obviously hardwire, it's not a big deal. This is what I wanted to do. And then you'll need an electronics meter to adjust the DC to DC step down module. There's a little screw head here on the actual converter or step down unit. And uh, you actually have to use this guy to tune it to 3.4 volts. Uh, it only pulls like, like 1.75 amps, I think it's rated at. So it doesn't pull very much amperage and very low voltage. So it doesn't use a whole lot of power, which should be awesome in my case. So that said, I'm going to work about popping this out. Basically, what you, you do is you're going to want to get the spludger tool in between the hard plastic and the rubber bottom. And uh, I haven't decided which way I want to start yet, in the back or in the uh, front. But basically, there's one, from all the videos I've watched, one little unit here, and then there's two on all the other sides. So I think I'm going to start back here to get it pried up a little bit, kind of hold it up while I work around the side. So... Uh, let me work on that, and then I'll get back to you. Okay, so I'm here. Got a little more sunlight. I've got the cover off, and uh, just uh, didn't want to re put it back on and redo it again to show you. There's a lot of videos out there that show you how to do it. However, when it's on there, what's holding this bottom plate to the Apple TV is these little clips here clipping to pieces that are down below that you can't really see from up here because they're towards the bottom. So... Um, what I did is I started with the back one here and uh, just took my little spluge tool or whatever the heck this thing is called and uh, just got it a little loose and worked up and then while it was I held that up with one of these guys I did one of the sides which basically got the corner open and then slowly worked my way around being as careful as I could not to break it and then Pop goes the weasel. Now to take off the power supply that I had to do here, um, it's just connected with this little guy back here. 
so I just popped that out and then literally first I was trying to pull with this but it couldn't so kind of got the tool under there worked from the what would be the actual front of the Apple TV towards the back because and before you do that I guess there are two little screws right that are holding the power supply hook up one here one here you take those two out then start peel, prying her up and then she just pops out she's uh, got some adhesive to keep her down otherwise we're good to go nice and clean and open uh, obviously didn't have to touch any of the electronics and what I will do is I'm gonna cut this power supply lead off because I'm gonna need this adapter to work into the DC power supply. So what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna cut this off real quick, kind of try to get it, keep them as long as possible, um, and then uh, probably strip the ends a little bit so I can start getting used to start working with it. So there we go. All right, so I'm gonna try to keep the video more zoomed in on the work that I'm doing rather than my face and everything. Uh, so obviously, like I showed here, um, I have this off. And I have everything to the point where I can start working on soldering things together. That's the one tool I didn't show you before was da -da -da -da, the soldering iron and of course some solder wire as well. So that's one thing that I didn't show you. Uh, and I didn't show you that, that you will need some wires for this as well obviously to do. So I have a couple here ready to attach to this. Um, and then eventually I'll attach to the cable that I cut off of the power supply. So this is obviously the power supply. All I did was cut the wires as clean to here as I can. So they're, they're there. And then I have my actual, oh, didn't throw it up here, did I? Actual piece. Now this is the actual clip that was attached to the original power supply. And I took my time and how I did this, my even my wire strips don't do a very good job of this. Let's see if I have my knife. Well, either way, I took my utility knife and slowly went around each of these little wires to pull uh, the sheathing off so to expose it. So if I can get this to zoom. Or... So you can see now I have wires exposed. And if you look at this, there's the, this is the, the top actually up here. And this is the bottom down here as it plugs into the Apple TV unit. So maybe I'll show you here at the Apple TV here. So this is where it plugs in just like that. The first two, which is towards the processor away from the power supply, those we're not even gonna use. Those are just wires. So we'll probably seal those up so they can't you know, tape them up a little bit and get them out of the way. The next three we're gonna put together and then in the following three we're gonna put together as well. And those are actually gonna go directly to the power leads. Um, so that's going to be basically our next step is to get that attached to my DC down converter. One more thing I wanted to show here real quick. I didn't even express it. So like I said, as it attaches in here, number one, number two, not used. And then as we move towards the power supply, three, four, and five wires, those are going to be your negative wires, your ground wires, and then four, five, and six. So the, the first three next to where the power supply was, those first three are the positive wires. So that's where we're going to wire to the actual positive output terminal of the DC step down. So, all right, let's come back over here. And actually I can set the Apple TV off to the wayside because I don't need that right now. All I need here right now, and I don't even need this right now because I'm going to do that next, is the step down converter. Maybe I'll zoom in a little more. Uh, sorry about that. All right, so I have my step down and then I have my wiring harness, which I know these three are going to be negative. These three are going to be positive. I'll keep those like that right now. But I think what I'm going to do is first I'm going to find the output and on my little step down, it even tells me this side is, let me turn it. So it says out, in. So input obviously is coming from the power supply so this is the output which is going to go to the actual apple tv so that's where i want to wire solder wire some of these wires so i'm going to actually see if i can't get these to go through the holes yay there we go i got one that didn't go through let me see if i can get, get that reattached there i had it to so i'm going to take my time on this i apologize if the video gets a little long but i want to make sure i do this right so 
Because I'm not going to get a second chance. Well, I guess I could get a second chance at this, but I don't want to. Yeah, so we got one wire that's not going to be. All right, so um, that's fine. I'm just going to pull that wire off, I guess. So you can see I have one wire. If I can get it to focus again. One wire that's kind of sticking out right there. I'm just going to twist it off. So, and for all you people out there that do soldering and stuff regularly, uh, don't judge me too harshly because I don't do this stuff very regularly. Alright, so hopefully my soldering gun is hot enough. Got some solder on the bottom, solder on the top. Thing doesn't look like it's going to be going anywhere anytime soon. It looks like it has a solid connection. And uh, of course, I'll eventually bend that over. So, but for now, for the other, for getting the second wire in, which work on the white, I'm just going to use white because it's the other color I had available to me. So now I have the two ends connected to my output, which now I'm going to bend those over without breaking the connection. And now I will solder the ends of these together. So you have to do a if only I had one of those nice little things that would hold the material while I worked on it, that would be fantastic. But I don't, so I'll live with what I got. All right, so let me show you what I did. I'm gonna unplug my soldering iron so it doesn't get too crazy hot while I don't use it. So there we are. So now what I'm gonna do is up here, let me get it focusing on my hand at least, geez. So what I'm gonna do is up here, I'm actually gonna get some tape and just uh, tape this up. Better option would be like uh, that rubber tube that you can go on there and like hair dryer or shrink wrap it or whatever. Uh, I don't have any of that with me right now, so I'm just gonna use tape. That said, that's gonna be fine. So that's what I'm gonna do next, so I showed you that. Now, uh, I'm gonna have to get another small piece of wire here attached to the other guy, but first I gotta modify that. So maybe I'll do that before I even touch this. So let's go into that next. Okay, so I decided to zoom in a little bit on this one. So you can see where the two screws right there and right there were actually attaching the existing uh, power piece here that you had to remove in order to get the power supply out. So this little USB guy is really close. If I actually attach to that, the front corner right here won't allow me to, so it'll actually hit. However, there's nothing up here that's doing anything. So what I'm going to try doing is I'm going to take my Dremel tool and cut that front corner right here off and then uh, see if that lines it up. Either way, I'm going to have to actually cut something else to raise it up a hair because this, when I get it in there, is going to sit a little low. Not much, but just a little bit too low. So what I'm going to first do is I'm going to cut that and uh, maybe I'll just I'll keep it on the screen here, but I'll, I'll speed it up a little bit. But uh, we'll give that a go. Now 
This corner as well. All right, so let's see if it fits. Looks like it's gonna fit almost perfectly. I didn't even need to take that much off, but I did. Now I just need to make a spacer to raise it up a little bit. So what I'm gonna do is I actually have a piece of plastic here from an old computer, and uh, it seems like it's gonna be high enough to actually do something about it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut this will go up to these electronic ports here. Actually, I probably should just have to do the whole thing. So I'm going to cut basically this by this by this. So I'm going to trace a little bit. Right. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take uh, my Dremel tool here and drill the holes for it real quick too. So I don't have to worry about that either. Okay, so got the holes drilled through it. Hopefully those will fit decently. Nothing else I can round them out a little bit more later, but it made it a lot easier to hold onto the piece when it's not so small, I guess. All right, clean this up a little bit. All right, so I just cleaned, just went over the edges real quick on it, and uh, so that's my spacer, just a big piece of plastic. And my phone thinks whatever. Nope, don't think so. So yep, my corner is gonna hit yet. So I gotta cut the corner off like I did the other piece. That'll do it on that front. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to see if I can grab the uh, screws and see if the screws are long enough to allow me to do this and put it in. Um, but I think that's I think that'll do it. If I need to get longer screws, I will. But otherwise, spaces it out so the USB ports are right in the middle, and so I should have decent support there. So yeah, we're going to go with that, I guess. And uh, from there. We'll attach positive and negative leaves to the next part. So that's what we're going to work on next. All right. So what I'm doing now is because the mainly because of the wires that I'm using are so stiff. I wish I had some smaller wire. I really do, and I really recommend you getting some smaller wire to when you if you do this. Uh, so I put in the I plugged it in, put the module in. Obviously, there's no power going to it, but put the module in here to see where the module is going to eventually sit, which is going to be right about there. Uh, the DC guy is going to be right there. So I'm just trying to get an idea how long of a wire do I need. Um, I may use some lighter wire than I can get here if I can try to locate some. I don't want to get too light a wire, but I don't want to, if I use the other stuff, then that's fine as well. Just I'll be using real small pieces of it so that it stays where it's supposed to go. It doesn't need to be very long, literally not even an inch. So, uh, that's my next goal is to get that going. So, yay. Okay, so I've changed a few things since I've been going. Uh, I have one last wire to connect, and I thought I'd do that one on film. But uh, the heavy wires I had just were too big, especially for this guy. So I decided to uh, cut, literally cut open a uh, USB cable and take the power cables out of the USB cable. Obviously, they're designed for 5 volts. So that's exactly what I did. I redid these guys real quick. Just heat, basically, I heated up the soccer so, the solder and pulled the wire back out, and, and uh, same with on the other side, and redid those connections. So uh, red and white is what I have again. Uh, and uh, what I'm showing you here, I'm going to zoom in here if I can. While I do this last one, this is what I found to work the best to get these small wires in the larger holes. So first, I'm going to twist these guys together if I can real quick to get all the wires in the same bunch and then I have a scissors make them a little shorter because my wire clips don't seem to clip them very well so I have these wires now in a nice little bunch and now I'm going to solder it to that so what 
I've done. Like I said, I'm not this big soldering guy, but uh, just take a little solder, put it on the end of the tip, come over to the hole and fill the hole in with solder. Boom, done. And then we can actually go ahead and just warm the solder up and stick the wire into the hole. That Since we know where the hole is, since we just filled it with solder as it is. So, since it's, it's going to be hard for me to show you, I guess. So now I have it soldered, uh, connected, all connected. And what I can do while it's out of, out here, I can plug this in the USB, get my reading, and see if about turning this down to 3.4 volts. So I think that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna just fix these soldering points up a little bit real quick before I do that. But I'm going to, uh, geez, it's hard to get it to focus on something so small, I guess. Let's see if I can get it to focus. Come on, focus. Do it. You know you can do it. Well, maybe not. It just zoomed in so much. I'm sorry, guys. So, they're soldered. Everything is connected good. I did the tape over here. I taped over the ends, even the wires I'm not using so they don't touch something that they're not supposed to. And, uh... Yeah, we should be good to go. So let me grab my meter and get the get a USB cord plugged in and we'll go from there. Okay, so I have my voltage meter now all set up. I have this one now. <laughs> I actually messed up. It actually uh, soldered my wire oh, to the wrong spot. But VCC and ground, positive, negative. Um, I have it actually hooked up to power right now. So if I hit on this side, it should register about... 5 volts, maybe hopefully you can read that kind of, so there we touch these two together, we're at uh, 5.13. So we're shooting for 3.4 on the opposite side, so let's go to the other side quick. Right now we're at 4.86, so we're a little high. So this little screw, that's right on the top of the, the blue cylinder, it's a little standard head screw, I'm going to it in a little bit. I don't, know, I don't know which way it goes. We're going to find out real quick. 4.86. So yeah, we're going higher, so I'm going to go the other way. So I'm going to set it like, there we go. Stop there. See where we're at. 4.8. So it definitely goes really, really slow. Three point three six. Now we're really getting there. It's not, uh, it's not something that you can just finally adjust real easily. If I can, I wonder if I could just hold it on there. Because, I mean, obviously if you have two hands or if you have something that can hold this on there while you're adjusting it. That'll be a lot easier. Let's do it that way, huh? I think that's about as close as I'm gonna get. 3.41, which I am happy with. That is not gonna do damage. So we're gonna. Let, I'm gonna just let it sit there for a minute. Um, I'm actually. You know what? I'm gonna put it in the case in the actual uh, Apple TV here, and then we'll replug everything in. And before I actually plug this into the Apple TV. <laughs> Wait, so I need to get it. I don't know. I'll just wait. 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 I'll just wait.
So I have to get the sort of the sort of the Okay, so I actually did get my spacer in there. I have the last, I have one screw in already, and it seems like they're long enough. So if I put the second screw in there, and uh, these are actually, if you want to know the actual bit, it's a T5 bit. Is what they are. And boom, heck yeah. Actually, it might be a T6. I may have grabbed the wrong one. T6. Yes, they are. They are T6. All right, so I'm not going to crank them down too much, but now I have my USB port right there. Uh, they are both. Both of the fasteners are screwed down. Uh, now it's about getting this guy in place. Now that I'm about ready to plug it in, I'm going to actually plug it back in now. Let me zoom back out while we do that. We're going to recheck the voltage. And we'll check. We're going to check the 5 volts real quick. Make sure they're still good. They're still coming out at 5. Let's check the other side. We're at 3.41. Heck yeah! We are good to go. So, now I'm going to go ahead and plug this guy in right here. And then I was kind of going back and forth of how, what I should do for uh, hooking or uh, securing this in place. Should I do adhesive or something? But at the same time, I'm also worried about it being too tall with that little screw set screw on top, and I don't want to. I don't want the set screw to move. So here we are. Oh, the light is flashing. Ladies and gentlemen, the light is flashing. So, she is powered up. She's powering up, I guess I should say. So she probably grab an HDMI cable and uh, take us over there and plug us in uh, before I put the bottom back on it. I'm going to do that. I'm not going to not gonna unplug it. I'm just going to leave it like this. I'm going to run an HDMI cable for my TV. And there we are. So my Apple TV is still sitting there. I didn't unplug it. I had just brought the extension cable over. She's working good. Um, I do think I have this still pre-programmed to run on my... Yep, I do. So it still runs on my standard remote control because I had it programmed before I actually took it apart. And uh, obviously it's not, I don't have, I never had it connected to Wi-Fi. I always had it uh, hardwired in. So it's working and it's working good. So next, uh, well that's it for this video, I guess. Um, again here I'm going to show you, I'm going to bring you down to what it looks like post-operation. Right there. And uh, you know before I tie it up, I'm, let's, get the, let's get the cover back on. Okay, so there we are. That is the complete guy. I'm going to snap the lid back on here in a second, but before I do, one last little view there for you, how everything looks. I'll get it up here so you can see a little better. Uh, what I did is I couldn't find any adhesive, but I did actually put a little dab of hot glue underneath there and then uh, stuck her down on her so she doesn't rock or rattle. The big thing is, is that obviously in this case we have some wires running down here uh, with that tape that I put tape on down here. We're going to want to make sure that we don't get those hooked on these guys as we slowly put it back in. So I'm going to take my time and make sure I don't. And maybe I have little tweezers I can use. I'll kind of pull them out of the way. All the garbage that is everywhere. And boom. Does it rattle? Looks good from the bot bottom end. Get the focus on it a little bit. Looks really good actually. So I don't know how well that focused, but I'm gonna give her one more shot here. We have the power cord right here. Plug it back in. 
as long as it lights back up, I'll be happy. And lights. So that is how you can convert your Apple TV to directly run off DC power. Now, I converted mine to run off 5 volt DC, or just USB connection. Uh, you could convert it from 12 volt, you could convert it from whatever you wanted. Uh, it's pretty easy with that step down module. Obviously, you saw it took a little bit for it to adjust, it took a little longer than I expected it to adjust, but DC power, baby. Now I can run this in my car, which is exactly what I'm gonna do. So, uh, I will probably have another video, a tutorial, kind of how to basically put this in the vehicle with uh, my computer and all the other stuff that I did. Uh, but we'll do that at another date. This is what I wanted to do today. And to recap, tools that you will need, spludgers. Um, in my case, I have those plastic ones. I'll bring those back out one more time. Um, so, you know, spludger tools. You can get those online. Uh, you will need small straight head screwdriver for the adjuster tool, uh, T6 uh, bit as well for the actual power supply unit to pull it back out and then put, if you need to mount something back in. Otherwise, you don't have to use that USB port. You can just hard or basically hard solder in an actual cable. If you did that, then you're probably going to want to put a knot or something so you can't pull it out. Uh, you'll also need a soldering iron, uh, unless you're using quick connectors, which you could do. Uh, if as long as you get smaller enough ones that will fit inside there uh, of course solder along with that you'll need some way to cut the cut little small little cables and strip the ends uh, and then also a way to cut the actual uh, adapter off of the actual power supply itself uh, little tweezers actually is a good thing to keep on hand as well and then uh, some scissors are never uh, a bad idea either but that is it it's been kind of fun and now that it's done, I, I don't have anything to tinker with, so I'll have to figure out something else to do. So that said, thanks for watching, guys, and Apple TV 3rd Gen in the vehicle. Yay.